Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to talk about five books that I think every software engineer should read. These books don't pertain to any specific technology stack, but to software engineering in general. Um, they're also very easy reads and not technically overwhelming for new software engineers. Some of them do have some code samples and practical examples, but they're still very easy to follow with a low barrier to entry. I did a similar video a few years ago, and since then I've read a lot more books and this list has changed a bit. So I thought I'd make an updated version. But before we get started, if you have not already, please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell icon so you don't miss videos that I upload to help you excel in your software engineering career. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers. Thank you. Uh, and let's see if we can get to that milestone pretty soon. I'll be doing my biggest giveaway yet when we reach 100,000. So if you're not already subscribed, please make sure you do. Also, every book I mentioned today will be linked in the description below. With that said, let's get started. The first book in this list is Clean Code by Robert C. Martin, lovingly referred to as Uncle Bob. In a fictional world, if there was a law that were to be passed that mandated every new software engineer to read a book and keep it around for the rest of their careers, it would be this book. This book was there in my last list and probably will continue to be there until something revolutionary happens that makes the ideas in this book obsolete. So far, that is not the case. There is so much conversation in software engineering around efficiency, optimization, algorithms, and many things that are geared towards making great software, but there isn't much information about how new software engineers can get to the place of being able to write that great code. And the simple answer to that problem is by building good habits. And this book is essentially that, a list of great coding habits that you should start building early in your career and continue to build throughout your career. Let me give you an example. Chapter one talks about the Boy Scout principle. The term Boy Scout itself is kind of old school and in 2022, not very inclusive of other genders. So it should probably be changed to just the Scout principle because everyone can be a good Scout, not just boys, but I digress. The idea of the Scout principle is to leave the campground cleaner than you found it. Does this have anything to do with software engineering? No. But the concept applies. You will be surprised how many times I've encountered software engineers that just want to patch up things and move on because it's someone else's problem. If you follow the scout rule from early on, you will at least raise concerns every time you see problems in your code base, even if you don't have time to fix it right away. And over time, this attitude morphs into a critical leadership trait where the lack of quality in a project that you work on is your problem, regardless of who wrote the actual code. But the book is not limited to just analogies that are somehow linked to software engineering. It has some very good technical information about abstractions, object symmetry, error handling, test-driven development, refactoring, concurrency, code smells, and so much more. These topics together will help you build a rock solid set of habits that are common traits of great software engineers. Remember that nine out of 10 times, it isn't your pure genius that makes you a great dev, it's the small good things that you consistently do over many years. A natural follow-up to clean code is clean architecture, also by Robert C. Martin. Building software systems or services isn't just about writing a method here, fixing a bug there, adding a feature in another place. At some point, you'll need to start visualizing the entire picture at a very high level to be able to create a sound architecture. This is where things like understanding how various components work together, how you should make pieces modular, and how to keep it flexible and extensible, yet free of security concerns, come into play. And this book teaches you exactly that. In chapter one through six, it explores the foundations of structured, object-oriented, as well as functional programming. Chapter five through 11 is dedicated to solid principles, which is the most important design patterns you'll probably learn, and that is still relevant in today's world, regardless of what type of programming you do. SOLID basically stands for Single Responsibility Principle, Open Close Principle, Liskov, Substitution Principle, Interface Segregation Principle, and Dependency Inversion Principle. I'll make a dedicated video about these design patterns soon because they deserve more attention. But for the remaining chapters, it goes on to talk about ideas around designing components, cohesion, and boundaries, which takes a note from behavior-driven design. 
Uh, this book isn't for the absolute beginner, but if you start getting familiar with clean code and gain a few years of experience, this is a great book to start and keep in your collection. The third book I recommend is DevOps Handbook by Gene Kim, Jez Humble, Patrick Dubois, and John Willis. In 2022, as a software engineer, you should be very well versed with DevOps. I know some companies have dedicated DevOps positions and engineers don't really have to deal with it, but I will tell you that that is getting rarer every day and will continue to do so. So it's a great idea to start learning about it. Good DevOps practices in today's world are critical for producing high quality, constantly evolving, and competitive software or services. And this book is a great introduction to the world of DevOps. This book introduces you to the concepts and best practices of agile continuous delivery, things like the foundations of robust deployment pipeline, automated testing, continuous integration, as well as risk averse releases. It also introduces you to proper ways of collecting telemetry to anticipate issues and also the best security practices to protect your deployment pipeline against potential threats. As I mentioned, before, I think this book should be a part of any software engineer's resource set in 2022. The fourth book I recommend is Software Engineering at Google by Titus Winters, Tom Manshrek, and Hiram Wright. I love this book so much because it explores how large monolithic code bases are managed and maintained collaboratively by thousands of software engineers across thousands of projects. This book covers literally everything. The idea of software engineering versus programming, culture, knowledge sharing, leadership, productivity, engineering best practices, documentation, testing, version control, DevOps, and so much more. And what I like even more about this book is that it doesn't overwhelm you with technical jargon and instead goes over the concepts and anti-patterns and recommendations in a very anecdotal fashion. Um, an example of something this book talks about there isn't much literature about elsewhere is code reviews. We either review code or have our code reviewed on a daily basis, but but there is very little training around it. There is more to code reviews than just the act of making sure that the code meets a certain bar of quality. Uh, from the perspective of an inexperienced software engineer, code review can be quite nerve wracking. And from the point of an experienced software engineer, one strongly worded comment can destroy the confidence of a young software engineer. So even though it's all about code, there is some responsibility in terms of communication and mentorship. And I love that this book touches on those things. And while the information shared in this book is about engineering at Google, the lessons pertain to any engineering project, especially if it's large. So if you are interested in Google, that's great. But even if you're not, this book is an amazing read. The fifth and final book I recommend is Understanding Distributed Systems by Roberto Vitillo. You are using a myriad of distributed systems on your daily life, asking a voice assistant to turn your lights on or off, receiving notifications when your laundry is done, backing up your files in OneDrive, iCloud, or Dropbox, a range of cloud-based applications, including your email and all your social media, video calls to your friends and family, starting your car remotely, your ring doorbell, your Nest thermostat, the list can go on forever. And these are all some forms of distributed systems. And also, according to Stack Overflow's 2020 developer survey, the highest paid software engineering roles require some form of distributed systems experience. So whether you work directly on distributed systems or not, as a software engineer, it is always great to understand how distributed systems work. And the reason I recommend this book is because it is such a smooth and easy transition into the world of distributed systems, which is not the case for many other books in the same domain, which tend to be very dense and and technical. But that being said, even though this is a small and easy to read book, it does a great job at covering a lot of ground. It first introduces you to the common challenges distributed systems face, things like scalability, consistency, availability, and resilience. It then introduces you to various areas that come together to make up a distributed system. Things like how communication works over the internet, which is obviously the foundation of any distributed system. APIs, discovery, replication, transactions, scalability techniques, disaster recovery, testing, monitoring, and continuous delivery. So whether you're starting out with distributed systems or you're just curious about how day-to-day -day things like your social networks work behind the scenes, this is a great book for you.
And that's the list I have for today. Did I miss your favorite book? If I did, let me know in the comments below what you think is a must read book. And I'd love to hear your recommendations. If you are interested in books for data structures and algorithms specifically, do check out the video in the pop out window or in the link in the description below uh, for my recommendations. And as always, if you found this video insightful, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell icon so you don't miss any software engineering videos that I I post every week. If you have a question directly to me or for monthly Q&As, follow me on Instagram at Engineering with Utsa. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.